Hi guys, welcome back to another great drawing lesson. Today we are going to be drawing a wolf. And thanks Mr. Kim for the beautiful um, suggestion of drawing a wolf. There are a few suggestions that we haven't got to yet, but don't worry, I've got them written down on my list, so we'll be able to get to them eventually. Um, but I hope that you can join along with us today. We're going to be drawing step by step, and we're going to be drawing this really cool wolf. So... I'm going to be drawing in a pen so it's nice and clear in the video but you draw in your pencil but try not to do any erasing until the end so you know that sometimes we erase things that are actually really good it causes a lot of anxiety thinking is it good enough just leave it and you can always fix things at the end you will see this wolf he will look a little bit strange right to the last moment when we put on his tail so wait until that moment you can erase anything and correct anything that is breaking your eye at the end after you've drawn your whole drawing. Let's get, let's get started. On the top left hand side we're going to draw his eye and his body is going to come down, his tail and his legs. So visualizing where his body is I'm going to put his eye. I'm going to start with a curved line and you can see it's at a bit of an angle and another curved line underneath. And I'm going to draw a circle inside that I'm going to leave white. I'm just going to colour this eye in. You can colour in later if you would like. We're going to have another curved line. So just going up above the eye, we're going to have another curved line that just goes above the eye and stops in line with the eye. Let's do the front of his nose. It's a straight line coming down. And another curve line. See a little curve at the end. And coming in. And stop in line with his eye again. And we can put his nose here. So I'll just put his nose. See it's going to cover over my mistake there. And we can put in his mouth just underneath and also stopping under his eye. Alright, let's do his ears. And he's got eye. When I practiced drawing these, I found I kept drawing his ears a little bit small. So I'm going to try and draw bigger ears today. But if you're not happy with your ears at the end, you can always do them at the end. Two angled lines, a little curve at the top. And then we do a curved line at the back, at the back of the ear. Right, we're going to do go down and into his chest to start his first leg. And we're going to do some zigzags here for his fur as we go. If you are struggling with the zigzags, do a light line first and you can always put the zigzags in on top after. I'm using a pen so I'm going to do my zigzags at the same time. And we're going to go down and a little angled line. And I'm going to go down again. And I'm going to come down and around. And I'm going to put in his front leg. Very easy curve line and then at the back here I'm going to put a little roughly bit for some more fur and another curve line coming down in and we're going to do two straight lines for the bottom of his leg and they're getting a little bit narrower the space is getting a little bit narrower at the bottom Wolves are amazing creatures because when they hunt, they basically just can run and run and run and run forever. Right, I'm doing a little foot, three little curved lines, and then we just close it up at the end and close up the back for his heel. Let's do his front leg as well, just following the shape that I have. Straight line coming down and some curved lines. One. Two, and let's close up and then we'll put the other one in the front I think we can even put some claws there That'd be cool all right we're gonna go down his back and we've got we want this sort of his fur coming out so his his um, the shape of his neck is gonna come out towards the back I'm gonna do some more zigzags you can always get the shape more or less and then put the zigzags in after Right, and we need to smooth it on his back and around the back of his rump. And let's put in some more food. 
Right, let's look at the back leg. This back leg is going to curve outwards a bit and then around and around the corner and coming down. And we're going to do the other side of his thigh here. So I'm going to put some furry bits coming down his leg and then I'm going to come and match up with this line. And I want his feet to be at the same sort of height. So let's put those curve lines in for his toes. There we go. Okay, we're going to do his underbelly now. So coming where his chest comes in, jump underneath in your mind. We want it to line up. And we're going to do some more furry bits. And this gently curves upwards. I don't want to be too skinny, but always add in another row of fur if you feel like you've put, made it too high. Alright, it's going to leave a little bit of a space here and we're going to do more fur. This is his other back leg and we're just going to follow that shape more or less. Coming forward, put his foot on. And up and around and we can put it in. And we're going to put two little curved lines here by, I don't know what these are, his ankles I suppose, because I think his knee is up there. Not very good at mine at me of dogs I must say, um, but they have these really strong bits here, so we can put in that little detail. Now, you can see he does not look like a wolf yet because he doesn't have his bushy tail. So as I said, don't rub out anything, he's going to look much more balanced and better when it's got his tail and everything in. So we can put in, you can use your imagination here if you want his tail to go up or down or sticking out or however you want. But we want to have those good zigzags. I'm going to put a curve in here. Go back up the other side. And it's nice and thick. I don't want it to come in too close. So it's going to look a bit too much like a horse's tail. I want it nice and bold. Right, let's do a few more furry details. So around his face here I'm going to put in some fur and then down over his shoulder coming down I'm also going to put some more zigzags for some fur. Alright and let's put those claws on. So wolves hunt in packs and they're quite intelligent. They, um, they work together to bring down their prey. And they just run and run and run and they, they just have got such good stamina which means that they can run for a really long time before they get tired. Right, we're going to do our colouring. I've got my black pencil crown. If you have a grey pencil crown you can use that now for this part. I don't have a grey pencil crown so I'm just going to use my black pencil crown very lightly. But if you have a grey pencil crown then you can use that now and then swap to your black later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a general colouring. I want to leave his legs white, down the front of his chest white, under his belly a little bit and under his his face here white as well and we will we'll see what to do with that later. My strokes, I don't want to be doing big long colouring in strokes, I'm not colouring it in a colouring in book, I want my strokes to show his fur. So I'm doing lots of little strokes backwards and forwards and you remember to work lightly down the front of his nose and I really want that texture to come out so be thoughtful now of your mark making I want lots of mark making think mark making rather than coloring in and I want you to cover all his body with these short short little marks that are going to show off his fur and then we're going to come back in a moment to add more details all right there we go i've given him a good covering and I've kept my mark short all the way along. I know the temptation as I get 
further along than my marks are getting longer and longer so you really need to make sure that you keep your strokes short and your marks short and just think about how you're knitting those marks together so that you can get a nice even coverage for his tail i made my marks a little bit longer you can too uh, i think his fur in his tail is probably a little bit longer so the uh, we're going to now i'm going to sharpen my pencil and i'm going to go a bit darker now so if you use gray before you can switch to black now and we are going to do some of the darker details we know that a good drawing needs to have lots of contrast so we've got white sorry we've left white very thoughtfully we are going to shade in some shadows so this back leg here and this back leg here we're going to shade gently with our pencil crayon um, because we know that if something is behind and darker we can make it recede in our mind in our eye by making my shading it darker so i'm going to do that all right this leg here looks a little bit white now so i'm just going to put a little strip of very very light shading down the front and i'll do the same on this leg it's very faint just a little bit of shadow to make it more 3d right we want our dark darks to come in now so with pencil crowns it's easier to get a nice dark line when it's a bit sharper so if you need to sharpen your pencil we're going to start here what we imagine to be the middle of his eye between his eyes and we're going to put a dark stripe little zigzags that go up between his ears and under his eye here we can also let's do inside his ears remember to pause the video at any point if it's going too fast and I'm going to from underneath his ears I'm going to do some marks that go down the side of his cheek. And I want to keep those little short marks that I've been making. Maybe a little bit down the front of his nose. Alright, down his shoulder here, we've got this lovely ruffle. And I want to put a nice dark area. I'm going to shade a bit darker down his the top of his neck keeping those short strokes and we're going to make this nice sort of shadow coming down and just like we did with the cat yesterday small 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 strokes and then getting wider as we come up his body and blend it in we can put a few more strokes as you feel Yeah, I'll put a few here as well. Alright, sometimes your picture just tells you where the dark box should be. In line with this, here, coming up, think of a gentle curved line. And along his back, and going down that, towards the, behind this leg, I want to put a darker area. I'm just knitting those marks together and blending them with the surrounding areas. We don't just want our zigzag showing, we want the, all those marks to be knitting together. We're gonna carry it along his back, make it nice and dark, as dark as I can. A good drawing always has dark darks. And I can blend that out using my rule of thirds. Okay, so I'm going to pick this third line here and I make this area at the top here darker. And then coming down lighter as we come. I'm going to put another shadow coming from underneath the front of this leg. And again, I'm going to pick this sort of curve so that I've got a curved line that goes along here. It's not a hard line, but that you can just see where that shadow is is been going and knitting my little marks together again let's come and finish off at the back a 
Okay, this is gonna give him a lot of good shape. And I'm gonna bring this darker darkness coming down around his rim, knitting my little marks together. Maybe a little bit in front. But I'm keeping this light. And we're getting some good texture. Right, his tail definitely needs some attention. And so I'm just going to very simply go, oh, I need my bit more sharpening. Just a turn or two down the back of his tail. And and put it, and just blend it in with your marks. Knitting those marks together as we come down his tail. Always good to have things a little bit off center, so I've got this done here. I'm going to put a little touch on this side as well, but I don't need to go all the way up to the top again if I don't want to. And knitting those marks, maybe I just bring here the joints to his body. All right, okay, he's just about done. Um, I want you to take note of how I'm not making any special marks. Um, I'm really just scribbling, but I'm staying inside my lines. That's important. We've spoken about that before. But my marks, there's nothing really special about my marks. But what I'm not doing is I'm not coloring in. So coloring in is when what we learn at school, um, if we want to learn how to color in, in a pencil with pencil crowns, like in a coloring in book, and it's all the same direction. And it's all the same color and we don't want that in art we can do so much better so think about when you're when you are shading your your wolf think mark making rather than coloring in and I'm knitting those marks together and I just work in it work in and work in and layer those marks on top of each other and until you are happy put your picture up on the wall have a look at it let it talk to you tell it let it tell you where you, it needs a bit more and then you can you can finish your picture off really well your picture will always tell you what needs doing all right there we go boys and girls i hope that you enjoyed this video and i will see you tomorrow for more drawing